What is up guys, Tech with Sean here. Thank you for joining my session today to discuss the differences between OneDrive and Google Drive. Well, actually it's Google One, but we'll get to that in a second. Just know that they're both connected and basically the same thing with a few additional features in Google One. This video is focused on catering information for individuals, freelancers, friends, families looking for drive storage. This is not going to focus on businesses. However, if you're interested in the business plans in both Microsoft and Google, highly suggest you watch my Microsoft 365 versus Google Workspace video, which is a very comprehensive comparison on both the platforms. Anyway, I'm gonna break this video down into sections instead of by plans. That'll include pricing and storage, features, limitations, and privacy and security. Starting with the pricing and storage. Now, in order to purchase Google Drive storage, you do need to buy Google One, which is now the name that they package Google Drive storage and a few other things with. So if you're confused about the terminology, just know that when you're going for the free drive plan, you can consider it as Google Drive, but with any of the purchase plans, you are essentially subscribing to Google One. Both OneDrive and Google Drive includes a free plan which you can easily use with your free Word, PowerPoint and Excel Online, or Google Docs, Slides, Sheets, and Google Photos. The OneDrive free plan only gives you five gigabytes of drive storage, whereas the Google Drive gives you 15 gigabytes. As you can see, Google Drive gives you triple the amount of storage that you get with OneDrive. So it is a clear winner, but there is a difference that you may need to consider if you're using Outlook in light with OneDrive. Your Outlook mail storage has 15 gigabytes separately, which does not clash with your drive storage. However, this is for emails only. You cannot store files and photos or folders. It's strictly for email. But with Google Drive, the storage is shared with email. So if you use a single account to store your files and media, and at the same time use it as your primary email service, you'll find that the storage feels very limited. So either use a separate email service or have a separate account for your email. But when looking at it in a standalone storage perspective, Google Drive destroys OneDrive in the free plan. The cheapest paid plan of both the platforms costs one US dollars and 99 cents a month, and they both give you 100 gigabytes of storage, which is a significant difference from the free plan. But again, keep in mind, OneDrive does not share storage with email, whereas Google One or Google Drive does. The free storage is separate from the storage you purchase so keep in mind that the five or 15 gigabytes that you get is still available to you separately. So the next package that Google provides is the 200 gigabytes for $299 a month. Now there is no OneDrive equivalent for this plan and around this price range. So if you're looking for an additional 100 gigabytes for around this price, definitely go for this plan. The next plan by Google One is the two terabyte plan for $999 a month. The Microsoft plan that is sort of comparable with this plan is the Microsoft 365 personal plan for $6.99 a month, which is not solely a OneDrive plan, and we'll get to that in the features section, but for storage, you only get one terabyte of storage with the Microsoft 365 personal plan. However, this is expandable up to two terabytes for additional costs. So as you can see, this is the pricing scheme for additional storage with which you can incrementally add to your subscription. If you're looking for a flexible solution because you're not sure if you'll need two terabytes, then this is the plan for you. I would say that the Microsoft 365 family plan, which is $9.99 a month and comes with six terabytes, is more comparable with the Google One two terabyte plan. But that all depends on what exactly you're looking for. Let me explain. One of the most important features that Google One has over OneDrive is the option to share your storage with up to five other people, a total of six people. So if you wanted to add your family or friends, you can do that as long as you're willing to share storage. This doesn't mean that if you buy the 100 gigabytes package that each user gets an equal and proportionate amount of storage. Instead, let's say one user uses 99 gigs, then the rest of you only has one gigabyte left in total. Your family and friends will not be able to see your files or vice versa, so you don't need to worry about that unless you specifically chose to share it. This same feature persists across all Google One plans except the free version. When compared to OneDrive standalone or the personal plan, you don't get that feature. The reason that I say that the two terabyte plan is comparable to the family plan in Microsoft 365 is because the family plan also allows you to share with up to five more people as well. But in this case, each user gets one terabyte amassing up to six terabyte of storage in total. If you want, you can apply the same upgraded storage scheme if you'd like, adding an additional one terabyte 
and amassing 12 terabyte of storage in total. So if you're working in a team or want separate storage for your friends or family and need a considerable amount of storage, I would say pick the family plan over the Google one, two terabyte plan. But of course, storage and sharing isn't the only factor that will influence your decision. So let's take a look at some of the others. With the OneDrive free and standalone plans, you get a Microsoft account, which gives you Outlook along with 15 gigabytes of mail storage and access to Word, PowerPoint and Excel online, not the desktop versions. Yes, they're different, they have less features and you cannot save files onto your desktop. You also get Microsoft OneNote, Sway, Forms and Skype. With Google One, you get Docs, Slides, Sheets, Google Photos, Hangouts, Forms, Keep, and a bunch of other apps. If you were to go for the Microsoft 365 Personal or Family Plan, you get all the Office desktop apps along with your OneDrive, like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and you can save and work on them offline if you wish to. The best part about this is that if you were online, you can turn on the autosave feature and use Microsoft Office desktop on the cloud without the limiting features of the online apps. You can even collaborate using this application. When it comes to Google, you can work offline as well with Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides. You just need to download the Google Chrome browser extension. I'll leave a link to that in the description, but do keep in mind this does have issues that people have been facing. So as of right now, I wouldn't consider it an effective solution. Also, you don't get the option to save your files offline either. Though both OneDrive and Google One lets you synchronize your files into your Windows Explorer or even your Mac without using up any space in your hard drive, thereby really giving you easier access to your files. With OneDrive, it's straightforward. You just have to click sync and go through the steps shown. With Google, you have to download the backup and sync app first. I'll leave the links in the description on how you can perform both of these so make sure you go through that as well. You're also able to share your files, folders, and whatever else through links from both Google and OneDrive. All you have to do is get the link and send it to the necessary parties, giving them access to the specific location. This way, the users who have access will be able to view those files and folders and be able to see any updates that you make to those files and folders. Depending on the permission level you give them, they can even edit and upload into that location. Another neat feature in both these drives is the version history, which lets you recover an earlier version of that file. For example, if you screwed up the currently saved document version, you can just pick to go back to an earlier save and restore it. There are mobile apps for both OneDrive and Google One as well, so you can have easy access and convenience at all times. Next, let's take a look at the additional features that you get when you purchase a Google One subscription, in case any of these end up influencing your decision. If you have the 100 gigabyte plan, you get access to Google Experts, which will give you 24 seven support through chat or email. Chat response between two to three minutes, whereas email may take up to 24 hours. You also get member benefits like additional Google Photos editing features, Google Play credits, hotel discounts, and other exclusive offers throughout the year, or for as long as you have the subscription. If you go for the 200 gigabyte plan, in addition to everything else mentioned, you also get 3% back in store credit on any purchase on the Google store. Of course, I doubt this is going to be useful for a majority of people, but hey, if it makes sense to you and you often purchase from the Google store, I guess consider it as a factor. If you choose to go for the two terabyte edition, you get everything else plus 10% back in store credits as well. If you're situated in the United States, you get a free VPN within your Google One mobile app, which is pretty neat, but again, it's only for the US. As for the OneDrive standalone, you get limited access to what's called the personal vault, which we'll discuss soon under the security and privacy section. When it comes to support, you can go into support.microsoft.com and speak to an agent, but unfortunately, I can't attest to the quality of the support or how quick the response is. If you do have any experience with this, let the others know in the comments below. However, if you're going for the Microsoft 365 personal or family plan, you get a host of other features. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check them out separately. The description below the features will give you a fairly good idea of what exactly the features consist of. 
When it comes to limitations, OneDrive lets you upload up to 250 gigabytes in size per file. With Google, it depends on the type of the file. There are limitations depending on if they're documents, spreadsheets, presentations, or other types of files. There are other limitations in both OneDrive and Google Drive, like the amount of versions that can be stored for the versioning history feature. I'll either put those up on the screen if it fits or I'll put it in the description for you guys to check it out. Now let's take a look at privacy and security. When it comes to privacy, I just want to say that either of these providers don't give you complete privacy and they do retain the right to reveal your data if the situation calls for it. For example, if law enforcement demands it through a warrant, they're obligated to hand it over. There's a host of other things to consider such as personalized ads, affiliates who have rights to access certain types of data of yours. I will have a separate section including all the links required for you to completely understand exactly what data is used, including the encryption methods. Just check the description. Security wise, both OneDrive and Google Drive scans your file before you upload and share to check for viruses. And if there is any detected, the person who downloads the file will receive a warning that it is infected. Both Google and Microsoft accounts are protected by multi-factor authentication, which means you can register your phone or a secondary email address account to ensure that you get a prompt every time someone tries to log into your account. Multi-factor authentication by itself is an extremely effective security measure, but if you have the OneDrive free or standalone 100 GB plan, in addition to MFA, you also get what's known as Personal Vault, which lets you protect your data with an extra layer of security, such as with biometrics. The only problem here is that the free and standalone versions only allow you to store up to three files in the Personal Vault, which isn't much at all. If you went for the Personal or Family Plan, you can store all your files in the Personal Vault instead if you'd like. Think of it as a second layer of defense if somehow someone were to get through your MFA. OneDrive definitely has more security measures to protect your data, such as password protected sharing links, ransomware recovery, which lets you go back up to 30 days before your data was encrypted to recover it, and files restore, which works in a similar way. But all this is only if you opt for the Microsoft 365 packages rather than the standalone OneDrive. Considering the price is very similar to the Google One pricing, I would argue that it's completely worth it. So, which one is better? I would say it all depends on your requirement. I think Google One is impressive if you were an individual and maybe when you're sharing it with friends and family. But if you were, let's say, a freelancer, I would definitely suggest you go for the Microsoft 365 personal plan or if you're a team of freelancers, go for the family plan. Just because you get all the Office 365 desktop applications, which if you were working with clients or businesses, there's a high chance that they're utilizing Office packages. And when converting files, you don't want too much issues with the formatting. If let's say you were converting Google Doc into a Docx file for Microsoft Word, it's way simpler to just work within Office itself to get the best result in terms of formatting. When it comes to user friendliness and just very beautiful UI design, I think Google trumps Microsoft as well. Either way, I think the OneDrive 100 gig standalone plan is not worth compared to any Google One plan. But maybe you like the Microsoft environment, in which case I would say go for it. Go for whatever makes you feel comfortable and gives you the features that you want. Even if some of these packages has extra features, don't think of that as a deciding factor because at the end of the day, if you're probably not going to use it, it's not going to matter. More doesn't always mean better. Well, that's about it for the comparison. I'm not perfect. I'm sure I may have missed a couple of things. So do let me know in the comments if I did and I'll do my best to update the description or comments with those information along with the links. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like if you enjoyed my content, subscribe and let me know how I can improve in the future. Bye-bye.